Nintendo has always been a company that is full of innovation through their successes and their failures. They are a company that has single-handedly gone from strength to strength, sometimes creating something that has brought non-gamers into the fold. So today, I list the top five times Nintendo's failures have single-handedly changed the gaming industry. Number five the Wii U. Nintendo used the Wii U as a template to create the Switch console, a true gaming hybrid. The Wii U was designed as a way to make gaming accessible to fans and piggyback off the success of the Wii, which gave gamers a unique experience, one that was copied by both Microsoft and Sony in order to gain some of Nintendo's existing audience. The biggest issue with the Wii U was that the console was complicated. Third parties hate developing for it, driving developers such as EA, yes I said it, from Nintendo's waiting arms. Citing old hardware that could barely compete with the PlayStation 3. Despite the Wii U's dismal sales, the company managed to utilize the console to create amazing first party games and introduced the fan base to Amiibos, Nintendo's take on NFC technology, and managed to turn a profit despite the console's poor sales. The Switch was a lesson learned, utilizing better technology and a more hybrid system that can be taken anywhere and any location, incorporating Nintendo's technology spanning decades, and thus was a vast improvement on a PR nightmare that was the Wii U. Number 4 alienating third-party developers. Nintendo was created with single-handedly changing the gaming industry and the introduction of the family entertainment system in 1983. The Famicom contained no lockout hardware and as a result, unlicensed cartridges both legitimate and bootleg were extremely common throughout Japan and the Far East. The original NES contained the 10 NES lockout chip. If you lived under a rock, you probably wouldn't know what that is, which significantly increased the challenges faced by unlicensed developers and developers alike. Like. You wanted to develop hardware, you would have to follow some strict guidelines from Nintendo HQ, including game development for the competition. This and many other issues, including Nintendo failing to understand the ever-growing gaming market, led to third parties leaving the company in droves and faith lacking up until the Nintendo Switch. The company has now tried to win back relationships with both third party developers and also winning their trust back with no restrictions like before. Number three allowed Rare to be purchased by their competition. Rare was the British video game developer, the company that was established in 1985 by Tim and Chris Stamper, and helped breathe new life into the Donkey Kong franchise and created awesome second party titles, such as Conker's Bad Fur Day and Badger Kazooie respectively. They were a developer Nintendo had a relationship with and trust, but back in 2002, Microsoft acquired the rights to Rare who retained their branding, the logo, and Rare created properties. This also single-handedly gave birth to Platonic Games, who had created the now celebrated and buggy ukulele, which garnered fame via Kickstarter and internet websites such as Kotaku. Number two, innovating but still having no vision. Nintendo has given the several different devices a now commonplace, the revision of the D-pad, Nintendo's known cross design which developed in 1982 by Gunpei Yokoi, and also the rumble pack that's now become commonplace in the gaming industry itself. And if you can argue as well that the Game Boy single-handedly made handheld games, and made the gaming market so expansive and not contained via a home console. The company is an innovation, not just in gaming, but as a toy company itself. The main issue here is that Nintendo still don't understand one of gaming's most innovative features, that is, the internet. They take down the use of their gaming properties, get angry with gamers who pay for and decide to mod their consoles, and instead of embracing a fan base that is ever dedicated, loyal, and sometimes aggressive, Nintendo has shunned any use of their properties to the point that other companies have followed suit, with Atlas's Nevered, Persona 5, and also Konami copywriting YouTubers and Twitch streamers. Their use of their properties have become such a big deal to the fact that most streamers will not be streaming Nintendo games. Now someone who partakes in the the whole internet phenomenon that is YouTube because I am a fan, I am passionate about their properties, I am passionate about their characters and I am passionate about their narratives. Unless you're part of the Nintendo Partner Program, there's not really much that you can do about this and I'm not even being sarcastic here. They've done this to me on many an occasion. Now the problem being is that Nintendo have yet to understand what the internet is, they have yet to understand how creatives can help assist their brands and their products and thus it's creating a huge rift between Nintendo and people who could be the next third-party developer that could be making games for their console. Number one, 
giving birth to the PlayStation. As part of their award-winning relationship, Sony had placed plans in motion to create a Nintendo PlayStation hybrid console that would play Super Nintendo games, but also CD-based games that would have been created and licensed by the Sony Corporation. In the late 90s, however, due to Nintendo's fear of piracy and the fact that Sony would still be retaining rights to their CD assets, Nintendo decided to cause a rift and take a U-turn on their partner and make a partnership with Philips to create their own CD-based system and thus cause the conflict between all three parties involved. Nintendo later settled their issues and had both companies produce their systems despite the final products. Neither system was released and caused the companies to go into different directions. Of course with Nintendo with the N64 and Philips going forward with licensing Nintendo properties for varying results. Sony however had other ideas and used their hybrid console as a test to see if the company could move into the next stage of gaming development and thus gave birth to the Sony PlayStation. The first console to ship over 100 million units and thus not only became Nintendo's main competition but one of the biggest console manufacturers spanning generations. And there was also YouTube. <laughs> And that's it from me, folks, and as always, do you agree, disagree on my top fives? Tell me your opinions, and as always, if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And remember, this is Michael Burhan saying that I've got gameplay. Have you?